Trisha Todd, so happy and full of life, has fallen off the map. And cops don't have a clue what's happened to the 33-year-old divorced mom, Air Force vet, and registered nurse. It looks like she just went out for a little bit and never came back. The last known person to have seen her alive was ex-hubby Stephen Williams, who told investigators Trisha said she was going home after briefly visiting him and their little daughter Faith on the night she went missing. What were your initial impressions of him? He was cheerful, nice, compliant with us, um, wanted to cooperate as much as he could. Lieutenant Mike Dockerty says there was no reason to suspect Stephen had anything to do with Trisha's disappearance. He was very helpful. He was acting like somebody who was an innocent person that just wanted to help out in the investigation. Someone who wanted to find his daughter's mom. Cops say he even agreed to take a lie detector test. And Stephen was a respected career military man with an impeccable record going all the way back to childhood when he went through school with Trisha and her brother Jonathan. I just remember always seeing his name on the honor roll as you know, um, one of the very well disciplined and, and very smart kids get the uh, straight A's. Trisha's dad always thought highly of Stephen too. And he thought Stephen was a good husband to Trisha while they were married. He was so kind and gracious to her and patient, you know, whatever she wanted to do. In fact, their divorce, less than three months before Trisha's disappearance, was so amicable that Trisha even declined alimony. She said, I don't need alimony. I've got a good career as a nurse. I'm not going to take alimony from Stephen. Investigators couldn't see Stephen had any motive to harm his ex-wife and began to look at others who knew Trisha, including a man she'd met after moving back to Hope Sound, Florida, following the divorce. She was obsessed with him. She loved everything about this man. We followed this guy everywhere, and we hoped maybe Trisha Todd would show up at wherever he was. But she did it, and the boyfriend was quickly eliminated as a possible suspect. We talked to him several times, um, and he was completely cooperative with us. He assisted us in every way he could. As investigators would search for Trisha's killer, her own words would help detectives find their man. They would uncover a daily journal Trisha had kept that prompted them to take a closer look at Stephen, who appeared to have a dark side even Trisha's family didn't know about. We had learned through some of her posts that he was abusive to her. As well as her pets, which she cherished so dearly. He had in the past killed um, several of her animals, and one of them I think in, in her presence. We think it was to show his superiority over her, or to scare her. Then investigators learned something new about the night of her disappearance. They came up with a, with a gentleman who saw Stephen Williams driving her car. He was driving Trisha Todd's car and leaving the residence that night. Stephen had never told them that. And as we keep, so they say, peeling layers of the onion away, it's getting worse and worse for him. Investigators would also find security video showing him driving both Trisha's car and his own, as well as other incriminating footage. We also were able to locate a camera by Trisha Todd's house that showed a what appeared to be a black male with a very large military rucksack on his back in what looked like fatigues and a skull cap running in the shadows. And when confronted with the evidence, Stephen folded. And finally he admitted that it was him. Cops say they also found out Stephen took something to calm his nerves to try to throw detectives off his tail. So Stephen was actually taking a drug in order to evade the polygraph. He heard about the Neurontin and he came up out of his chair and said, that's used to defeat polygraphs. And that's why the polygraph was inconclusive, which really threw us for a loop. Stephen went on to say he was trying to dispose of Trisha's body after accidentally killing her, telling investigators that he got into an argument with, with Trisha that night and that he actually did punch her and that she fell and hit her head and died. And that he dumped her body in an isolated rural area. 
But five weeks and thousands of man hours of massive searches turned out to be fruitless. But there was still no sign of Trisha Todd. Stephen was charged with the murder and accepted a plea deal of 35 years in prison in return for a full confession of what he did to Trisha and where he hid her body. We thought our ultimate goal here is to find her body now, give her a proper burial. Investigators believe Stephen had actually strangled Trisha before admittedly packing her mutilated remains in a two by three foot plastic box. And he said he, he dismembered her. He cut her up, put her in the container, filled it with acid, and buried it. Stephen then led authorities to the Hungry Land Wildlife Reserve where he buried Trisha. And he planted a flag on the three foot grave he had dug for her. This is where he placed the flag. Um, he told us that she was, she, was, she was down underneath there. We'd have to dig a little bit. But even hardened law enforcement veterans like Lieutenant Dockerty and Sergeant Yesenia Carday weren't prepared for the horror that would be unearthed. We ultimately dug it up, opened up the container, and that's when we saw her torso. But tiny parts of Trisha's body, including teeth and fingertips, that Stephen had removed to prevent her from being identified were found scattered around the area. And they located them mixed in with the gravel and the, the shell rock right here. Divers also found Stephen's mutilation tools lying at the bottom of this canal. So they found the chainsaw, the reciprocating saw um, that he had used to cut her up. Um, and in the reciprocating saw was actually what, Trisha's hair and, and some remains, some portions of her in the, in the saw blades. Investigators would also learn that it was actually well planned before he'd even left his North Carolina air base to visit their daughter in Florida. This was clearly premeditated. Yes, prior to leaving Raleigh, North Carolina, he purchased it up there. He brought the acid down here with him. Trisha's family was devastated. It was shocking. It was like a wave after wave. I mean, first you have the container, then you find out that there was chainsaw or other power tools used in cutting up limbs. Then you found out about the acid. So it's just one gruesome detail after another. Making it even worse, Stephen Williams is the only one that really knows why he did it. From his prison cell, he reportedly tells cops Trisha disrespected him when he tried to Skype with their daughter and wanted full custody. And for Trisha's brother Jonathan and his wife Chastity, who have adopted Faith and are raising her with their own daughter. Now they're best friends more than ever, um, and, and we just were excited what the future holds. But the deeply religious Todd family can find it in their hearts to forgive Stephen Williams for what he did. There is no question it was a monstrosity. Um, but I should forgive, and then God gives me the power to do that. I've sent messages to him that we forgive him through his mother. But Lieutenant Dockerty is not so forgiving and says if authorities had known at the time what Stephen Williams had done to Trisha, they would never have given him the plea deal that spared his life. If we knew the drastic measures that he went through, how violent it was, he would undoubtedly be on his way to death row.